Hey, what is going on guys? This is Jake of that fifth friend and today I'm reviewing the Under Armour Hover Rise 4. So I have a love-hate relationship with the Hover Rise training shoe line. I liked the original Hover Rise and the Rise 2. The 2 is actually my favorite to date. I thought both of those models both performed pretty well. Their durability was on point and they only cost $100 USD. When the Hover Rise 3 dropped, I thought the performance and durability of this shoe took a hit. They changed pretty much the entirety of the shoe's construction and they increased the price to 110. So when the four dropped, I was super optimistic that they would have at least changed the things that were glaring issues in the three. And so while this model does have subtle construction upgrades that make it a slightly better shoe than the three, there are still some issues with this model. But a few pros that I have with this model include number one, they are a decent shoe for indoor class workouts, HIIT workouts, and athletic style training. So if you are primarily training indoors with this model and you want a shoe that has a HIIT focus bias with some athletic style training bias to it, this can be a viable option to look into. The hover midsole in this shoe gives you a nice level of spring and pop. So the midsole in this model has two different components. You have the hover tech and then you have an EVA foam that's a little bit more stable in nature. So I think the blend of these two feed really well into those training contexts and this model also works for short runs and light lifting so they can be a pretty good versatile training shoe for tackling a little bit of everything my second pro with this model is its outsole construction and note that this is primarily for indoor training i am not the biggest fan of this model's midsole and outsole construction for outdoor training i'll talk about that in my cons in regard to indoor training, you get a nice level of tread with the shoe, and I thought the forefoot in this model is actually a bit more maneuverable than the three. The three was pretty stiff and blocky, and it took longer to break in. This model took a little bit less time to break in, and you get a nice level of tread with this rubber outsole. You get tri-base tech here in the midfoot, so for jumping and other movements where you're trying to stabilize and plant, I do like this feature. And the heel is a little bit beveled, so if you do want to add like one, two, maybe three miles pre or post workout, this model isn't terribly uncomfortable to do so. In. The third pro that I have with the shoe is the booty style construction and the upper. So if you like booty style shoes, I think you'll like the overall fit and feel with this model. It hugs pretty well without like hugging too tight. So I think it walks that fine line between locking you down enough to where you can do multi-directional training and feel secure, but also not have heel slip. And then also the upper breathes pretty well. So you have a mesh upper with a 3D print and it overall it does a pretty good job with abrasion resistance. But that being said, let's talk about a few cons that I have with the Hover Rise 4. So three cons that I have with the Under Armour Hoverize 4 include number one, I still think lace durability is going to be an issue with this shoe. So we saw this in the Apex 2, Apex 3, and Hoverize 3, and that is these TPU eyelets causing friction and breakdown due to the laces like rubbing against them excessively over an extended period of time of training. When you are jumping, when you are running, when you are lifting, you can be putting stress into this top eyelet. I don't think that this eyelet is going to last an incredibly long time because even though the laces I think are better for the context of durability in the Hoverize 4 and there's less TPU eyelets in the shoe, I could still see friction being an issue. I'm already having a little bit of friction here on the midfoot side of my right shoe, and that's because when I'm doing multi-directional training, I have a big, pretty big bias when I'm pushing medially, and I could see that being an issue for other folks as well, especially those who are really putting in a ton of stress into this model's upper midfoot. The second con that I have with this shoe is that the midsole and outsole are pretty much the same as the three. And so why I don't like this model for a ton of outdoor training is because the midsole up here isn't really protected by the rubber outsole. So in my Hoverize 3, for example, I was already having like this like grating and fraying of the midsole up here in the forefoot when I was training outdoors. And this was after one session. The Hoverize 4 has the same construction. So I would suggest just not using your shoe outdoors if you are training on concrete and doing a lot of cutting because you can really tear up the midsole up here in the forefoot. The third con that I have with the shoe is that if you have a flatter foot, I don't think this is going to be the shoe for you. This model has a pretty beefy arch here. So if you don't like a ton of arch support, then you're not going to like how this model fits. I have a fairly high arch, so I really like how the shoe fits. But if you have a flatter foot and you don't like an arch really driving into that medial midfoot, I would say definitely think about that before investing in the shoe. But that all being said, honestly, the construction updates in this model are better compared to the three but there are just still issues with the shoe. So hopefully maybe when the five drops and it's not just like an updated upper and a couple of upper features in the shoe, some of these things are reworked. So when it comes to the performance of the Under Armour Hoverize 4, I'm gonna break this section into a few different parts. I'm gonna talk about lifting, versatile training, shorter runs, and then daily wear. In the context of lifting, this model is okay. It performs like you'd expect a more hit-focused shoe to perform. So I would say probably cap your loading 
to being a little bit more light or moderate in nature. Around like 405 pounds in a trap bar deadlift, that's where I started to notice more compression of the shoe's midsole. So this midsole stack height is pretty big and you have a little bit of toe spring. So it's really tough, I think, to really ground the forefoot in this model because with that thicker midsole pulling that toe up, it's really hard to really drive those toes down and stabilize. So this model does do a pretty good job for accessory work. And if you're doing like power stuff that's lighter in nature and you plan to just move fast, the shoe should be fine. But for heavier strength work, I would say look into like something like the Tribase Rain 4 if you're looking into Under Armour training shoes. For versatile training, the shoe does a pretty good job. And it's a bummer that there's still durability issues with the shoe because I want to like them for this context. I like the hover midsole for jumping and for springy activities. I think it does give you a nice level of bounce. Plus with that increased forefoot maneuverability in the shoe, I think it does give you a nice level of pop, especially if you're training on the forefoot a lot, jumping, doing jump rope, whatever it might be. I also like the outsole in this shoe for indoor workouts. Just <laughs> Under Armour, can you please fix the durability up issue up here in the forefoot? Because this shoe I think could be a really strong performer if this was fixed and the lacing system was fixed for versatile training. It is a pretty comfortable shoe. The upper locks you down pretty well. The booty style construction I think is actually a good thing, not off-putting like some booty style constructions can be for versatile training. So as a whole, it does work for that context. I do like them. But again, I cannot stress enough that some of the durability issues with this model do make me kind of pause recommending them for you. When it comes to shorter runs, this model does a pretty good job. If you're planning to just do like one, two, maybe three miles tops pre or post workout, this shoe should do a fairly good job of being comfortable and giving you enough responsiveness. The beveled heel, I think, does feed a little bit better into the style of running. And if you're primarily doing treadmill running, then I think this model makes more sense in that context. If you're planning on running outdoors, once again, though, just keep an eye on the stress of this top eyelet and the midsole up here in the forefoot. For daily wear, I like this shoe. And so I do think it can be a viable option for walking and for daily wear, especially for folks who do like a little bit more arch support in their shoe. They are comfortable, they breathe pretty well, and with walking, you're not really putting a ton of stress into the midsole up here in the forefoot, so I'm not too concerned with the durability in that context. However, what I will say is that with these exposed foam layers here, be conscious if you're wearing these out in the rain or in mud, because that could cause some breakdown here. But for just general daily wear in a dry climate, this model does a fairly good job, especially for longer distance walking. So now let's answer the question, who should invest in the Under Armour Hover Rise 4? So I think if you plan to only use this model indoors, and if on a weekly basis, your training breakdown looks like HIIT workouts, classes, some light lifting, and maybe some short treadmill runs, then this model could be worth it, especially for lifters and athletes who like a little bit more arch support and booty style constructions. But that being said, it's really kind of hard to find where this model fits into like the breakdown of other cross training shoes. Since it has durability issues and a hover midsole and tri-base tech, like the Project Rock line, like the Tri-Base Rain, like the Hover Apex, it's really interesting to see like, okay, Under Armour, where does this shoe really differentiate itself from those other models that are a little bit more niche in certain areas? So overall, it's a pretty good training shoe for general stuff, but the Under Armour Hover Rise 4 honestly leaves a lot to be desired. So when it comes to sizing and fit in the Under Armour Hover Rise 4, most lifters and athletes should be safe going true to size in this model. The length fits fairly true. They do run a tiny bit long, and the width is what I would describe as like a neutral width. Under Armour describes the shoe as having a regular fit. Now, a couple of subtle sizing specifications is number one, if you have a notably narrow foot and you generally have a lot of room at the end of your shoe's toe box, I would say maybe size down a half size. However, I think that's gonna be a very small population that will have to do that. And then number two, we do have a decent level of arch support in this model. So if you have a flatter foot and you don't like having arch support in your shoe, that could be something that turns you off because you'll have that medial midfoot driving into your foot. So that being said, most lifters and athletes should be safe going true to size in this model. And if you do fall into those two categories I discussed, definitely consider that before investing in this shoe. When it comes to price in the Under Armour Hover Eyes 4, you can expect to pay $110 USD. Honestly, the price point can be a little bit hit or miss. I think if you plan to use these shoes primarily for HIIT workouts and classes, then it could be fair. They are priced similarly to the Nike Super Rep Go and the Reebok Speed 22 TR. So as a HIIT focused shoe, I do feel like the price point is pretty fair for this model. However, again, with some of the durability issues, I'm not sold that they're gonna work in every single context. So if you plan to do a lot of running or if you plan to do a lot of outdoor training, you may wanna look into other models because the price point would be a miss for you because the shoe will likely break down faster faster than you want. All right, so now let's cover the weight, heel toe drop, and insole in the Hover Rise 4. For my size 10 model here, we have a weight of 11.25 ounces. This model has a heel to toe drop of eight millimeters 
and this model does not have a removable insole. All right, so now let's cover the construction of the Hover Rise 4. Up here on the tow box, we have an extended outsole layer that wraps up. Around the tow box here, we have a mesh upper with a 3D print. This is basically designed and used to be a little bit more abrasion resistant. Looking at the midfoot construction, we have that mesh that runs through the heel, but then we also have this TPU layer here on the medial and lateral midfoot. So overall, this is better, I think, than the 3's eyelet construction. However, Ever, I still think you might run into friction issues with this model. So for example, I'm already having a little bit of rub here on the medial side, and that's gonna tear up the laces, I know for a fact, over time. We have five core eyelets that run up, and I do like the eyelet construction in this shoe compared to the three that had like this awkward like double eyelet system. I wasn't a huge fan of that, but I do like the eyelet and midfoot system in this model, and the lace is more of like the circular lace, which is better for overall durability with the eyelet. But again, again, I still think this TPU is going to be problematic for a lot of folks. Looking at the boot construction, we have a booty style construction, so we do not have a separate tongue in this shoe. The boot has a nice level of structure to it, so I don't think you're going to have heel slip issues in this model. You also have an external heel tab back here for helping to pull that shoe on since it is a booty style construction. We have some Under Armour branding here on the lateral midfoot. We have some hover branding back here on the heel. Now, looking at the midsole construction, we have that hover midsole throughout. So we have hover tech on the internal part of the shoe, and then we have a slightly more stable EVA foam that kind of encloses that hover midsole. Looking at the outsole, we have tri-base tech here in the midfoot. Back here on the heel, we have a full rubber tread, and then up here in the forefoot, we do have some grooves here to promote overall maneuverability. Once again, though, I don't like the construction of this midsole and outsole and how it interacts with like concrete, for example, when it comes to friction. So keep an eye on that. The midsole does sit pretty close to the ground. So if you're cutting and digging into this midsole on any surface, it's gonna cause some friction. You might see some breakdown there. Once again, this model does not have a removable insole. So this material in here is set. You cannot pull that out. You Probably could if you really tried, but I would say don't do it just for durability reasons. But overall, that wraps up this model's construction. If you have additional construction questions on the Hover Rise 4, drop a comment down below. All right, guys, that wraps up my review of the Under Armour Hover Rise 4. Overall, it's an okay shoe. It's a little bit better than the 3. However, there are still definitely issues with this model in regard to long-term durability. If you have any additional questions on the shoe, drop a comment down below or reach out to me personally, whichever you prefer. And as always, guys, drop a like on the video, drop subscribe to the channel. I will see you in the next one.